good morning everyone today we are going to see about the estimation and interpretation of just suspension speed and its significance during scale up so the term just suspension speed used to be denoted as njs so first of all getting into the topic we should understand what is exactly this njs means so njs represents the minimum stirrable speed at which no solid particle is going to settle on the bottom dish of a reactor and if they are going to settle the maximum settling duration can be like 1 to 2 seconds so it was first introduced by a scientist named zwittering so that's the reason we are going to mention this as a zwittering equation so the formula to calculate this njs is so njs equals to s into mu divided by rho this is going to be this rho l to the power 0.1 multiplied by g that is the acceleration due to gravity into delta rho divided by rho l to the power 0.45 into dp that is the particle size diameter to the power 0.2 into x to the power 0.13 divided by d to the power 0.85 so this is the equation which will be used to calculate the njs so let's see the terms one by one s represents the shape factor and this mu indicates so this mu indicates dynamic viscosity and rho indicates so here there will be two types of densities one is rho s and the second one is rho l so rho is indicates the density of solid and rho l indicates the density of liquid and g indicates the acceleration due to gravity and dp indicates the particle diameter so x indicates ratio of solids to solvent in weight basis and this capital D indicates agitator diameter so out of all these things so it is difficult to estimate or uh, find the factor of I mean the value of shape factor that is s so for this we will be having different tables why because this is going to be dependent on the agitator symmetry depending on the dimensions of the agitator this is going to change and in this particular video I will be estimating or I will be considering certain value for this shape factor and in the coming video I will try to make a video like how to select or how to identify the shape factor ok so before going into the topic we should understand what are the limitations for using this particular equation why because for each and every equation there will be certain limitations so the main problem is so we will forget about the limitations and we will try to implement the equations that we know in different scenarios so first of all we should understand what are the limitations so the limitation there are total four limitations that is the solid to solvent ratio should be between 0.5 to 20 percent why because the scientist Wittering has conducted experiments only within this range so this equation is an empirical equation which has been defined only within this particular range and the second thing is the particle diameter so this should be between 125 micron to 850 micron and the next one is the density of liquid 
so this is going to be varying between 790 to 1600 kg per meter cube and the last one is the viscosity so the viscosity is going to vary between 0.3 into 10 power minus 3 to 9.3 into 10 power minus 3 pascal second so before applying we should understand this limitation and now coming to the significance of this NJS during scale up so to understand this better I'll take an example so in our last videos we have made videos on uh, we have prepared some content on scale up of mixing using power per unit volume tip speed as well as mixing speed so in these videos if you are able to observe whenever you are going to scale up like let's say from small scale to large scale so automatically what will happen is the rpm like we are going to always play with the rpm why because this is a variable and at any point of time we can control this rpm so the rpm is going to be high in small scale and whenever you are going to scale up so the rpm is going to get reduced but if in this case like uh, let's say a case of isolation so the rpm let's say during this small scale you have controlled uh, the anchor rpm up to around 30 to get some coarser particles and during scale up so let's say the batch size is initially 30 kg and the same you have scaled up to 300 kg so you have estimated the rpm uh, during the isolation step for 300 kg and it is found approx 7 to 8 so this you need to maintain to match constant power per unit volume okay but we don't know exactly whether this is applicable to our case or not why because the rpm is very low here so it's almost 7 to 8 so 7 to 8 in the sense so we are not sure whether uh, the selected rpm is going to suspend all the particles or all the solids in the reaction mass uniformly or not we don't know but this is a theoretically calculated value okay so in such a case so to understand what is the minimum rpm that is required to stir the mass so we should calculate this ngs so we can consider this ngs as a benchmark like so at any point of time the rpm i mean the operating rpm should be higher than that of the ngs if it is going to be less than that of ngs so the results that you are going to get are not uniform or we can say you might fail in quality okay so now let's say how to estimate this NJS so the shape factor in this case I will be taking as 3 so for an example I am just taking it as 3 and in the coming video I will try to show you how to take these shape factors and coming to dynamic viscosity I will consider it as 8 into 10 power minus 3 so this is pascal second or kg per meter second and coming to the density of solid I will consider it as 1600 kg per meter cube let's say this is a catalyst in our reaction and coming to the liquid density I will be considering it as 1000 kg per meter cube and the next one is acceleration due to gravity this is 9.81 meter per second square and coming to particle diameter so I will be taking it as 800 micron and coming to the ratio of solid to solvent so let's say uh, it is approx 5% and coming to agitator diameter I'll consider it as 2 meter let's say it's a 10 kL reactor so the diameter of a 10 kL reactor is going to be 2.5 meter approx and I'll be considering around 80% okay now let's use this values to calculate the NJS so the units of NJS are going to be in RPS or we can say it as second inverse so if you want you can prepare some units and dimensions like uh, through these units and dimensions you can observe this or you can evaluate further like if you have any questions with respect to the units so check the dimensions and all so you can get a clarity on that so coming to this estimation so this is s and then the next one is the dynamic viscosity divided by the density of liquid 
so this is 0 0.008 divided by 1000 to the power 0.1 and the next one is acceleration due to gravity that is 9.81 multiplied with the differences in density that is 1600 minus 1000 divided by 1000 to the power 0.45 and the next one is dp that is the particle size diameter so here it is 800 micron so i'll be converting this into meters so here it is in micrometers so i'll be converting this into meters by multiplying it with 10 power minus 6 to the power 0 0.2 and then the ratio of salt to solvent in weight basis so here i got 5 percent so 5 divided by 100 to the power 0.13 divided by the agitator diameter to the power 0.85 so here the NJS you got is 0.185976 this is in second inverse or RPS so that to convert this into RPM so I'll multiply it with 60 so you got around 11.15 so you can say it as 12 RPM So this is going to be approx 12 rpm so this is how we need to estimate the njs and coming to the interpretation part now what we can say is so if your agitator diameter is 2 meter and the ratio of solid to solvent is 5 percent and the maximum particle size diameter is 800 micrometer so let's say the solid density is found to be approx 1600 kg per meter cube and in order to completely suspend the solid which is having a density of 1600 kg per meter cube in a liquid which is having a density of 1000 kg per meter cube so we should maintain 12 rpm so here the agitator i have considered is anchor and i have considered or uh, i have taken a value of 3 so it is only an appropriate i mean an approximate value but it's not accurate okay so you can find the accurate values depending upon the geometry of an agitator. So that I'll try to explain you in the coming video. So for now this is how we need to estimate the NJS. So this is going to be the benchmark. And at any point of time the operating RPM should be always higher than that of this NJS. If it is less than that of NJS, so you are going to face some challenges. Okay. So if you have any questions in this video please write us at pharmacalci823 at the rate gmail.com if you are liking this video please subscribe to our channel and also please share the video with your dear ones for your convenience i will be attaching this particular sheet and i will be providing you with a download link so you please check the download link in the description of this video thanks for watching the video